All right, so deltoid, you know, shoulder cap, the muscle on top of the shoulder, but now let's uh, take a look at it in more detail. So, um, you know, the order of your book is uh, listed AOI. Uh, what that stands for is action, origin, and insertion. But a logical way to study this is to first look at origin, the O, and then insertion, the I, and then the action makes more sense once we know the origins and insertions. So that's the order that we're going to go. So let's take a look at this origin and what it means. Um, one important slight um, thing that needs explanation is that different textbooks will use slightly different wording. Um, and so I highly recommend that for this class, you use the study tools that accompany Trail Guide. Um, they've got an app and they've got flashcards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because if you start using random kinesiology study guides, the wording might be different enough to throw you off. Um, you know, it could it could be as simple as describing an area more generally uh, versus all the details, or it could describe the exact attachment a little bit differently. Why, you say, is a great question, <laughs> because you would think this is standard, right? Um, it's pretty standard, but when uh, people do dissections on humans, there's actually enough anatomical variation that it's not going to be exactly the same on every single person. And so, you know, some of these things kind of shift a little over time. And let me just make sure if this chat is something... Ah, uh, great question. Do we worry about the N right now? Great question. The N stands for nerve. You do not need to learn every single nerve in the body. And we will try to call out when it's ones that we've seen on the licensing exam. Um, so kind of some of the major ones do come up. So that would mean like what nerve makes that muscle fire? And this one I have seen come up on testing um, practice exams. So I would say learn that the deltoid is innervated by axillary, but you don't need to memorize every single nerve. Can awesome I, can question. I, uh, one grading. Uh, yes, please. Comment. Sure. Yes. Um, so when you're turning in assignments that are the origin, insertion, action, you're basically just taking them right from the trail guide. If I correct something and I pick and I'm like, no, mm, that's you know not quite correct for the origin or insertion. If that's what your book says, you can just let me know, like, hey, this is my edition of Trail Guide says this, and then we'll just go with it. Yeah, because that's the other fun thing is that Trail Guide, even amongst itself, will sometimes shift things a little bit. Usually, it's very small changes. But um, some of them are a little bigger, like they used to call the peroneal muscles, the peroneal muscles, and now they call them the fibularis muscles because they're on the fibula. And I've called them the peroneals so long, I don't want to call them the fibularis muscles. I'm sticking to it. That's the hill you're going to die on. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> I <laughs> have more important things to do. There are better hills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look here at the um, the deltoid origins for start. Oh, uh, it uh, originates on the lateral third of the clavicle, and I'm going to attempt to shade the area I'm speaking of in red. Um, traditionally, uh, origins are shaded in red and insertions are shaded in blue. There's certain anatomical um, uh, consistencies across textbooks that are so consistent they're useful. So for example, yellow refers to nerves. And so you'll see that in models um, and you will even see that on some of the skeletal models back there, somebody's got origins in red and insertions in blue. So some uh, that that's why we're going to use the same one because you'll see it in models and pictures too. Mm -hmm. All right, so lateral third of the clavicle and the acromion process, you know, way out on the lateral side of the shoulder, and then the spine of the scapula, and then another feature of trail guide I like a lot, which is in your textbook as well, is this picture on the bottom. 
it shows the origins and insertions um, shaded on without the muscle gone with the muscle gone um, right on the bone. And for this muscle, it may not seem very exciting, um, but certain muscles attach on really broad areas and other muscles attach in very pinpointed areas. And that can be useful to know as a massage therapist. So that's why I like that feature. It shows you exactly where it originates and inserts. So um, on our skeleton models um, or on yourself, right? The clavicle lateral third, this is the side away from the center, right? And you can palpate that on yourself. I, I'd recommend a few fingers um, scooping around and then out to the acromion process and then out to the spine of the scapula. Now, here's a part I really want to highlight. I've already showed you this awesome triangle on the top where the traps and the deltoids share. But this is something that a lot of massage therapists would sort of not really grok in their hands. If you don't really lock it into your mind and feel it on humans' bodies, it's kind of easy to forget uh, or to never learn that the deltoid actually originates all the way on the lateral third of the clavicle. Like a lot of people focus, right? This big bulging muscle, it's easy to feel, it's easy to see right on the side, right on the back, but you can palpate on yourself right now how far forward that muscle really angles up. So it's very easy to feel if you feel either from the lateral clavicle side or right on the bulk of the muscle and then kind of go off that big bulge. It's a big angle, big triangle, and how far it really goes over to that clavicle. So when you're massaging both trapezius and deltoid, you really want to get all the way up to the clavicle like that. Yeah, can you all feel how far it comes? Pretty cool. Cool, let's do some movements. Awesome idea. You can see feeling feeling how that how that works as well. Yes. All right, cool. All right, and so then the insertion is quite simple on the deltoid. It is the deltoid tuberosity. And we talked a little bit about this the other day, um, how this can be a tender point. Um, and it's about a third to almost a half of the way distally down your um, arm. And you can feel and or see the way the deltoid comes to that point on the lateral side. Now, you know, some bony landmarks kind of like stick way out, like the spine of the scapula, and you're like, oh, yes, I definitely feel that. The deltoid tuberosity is just kind of a little bit of a, a roughened bulge on the um, bone, and we're not really like feeling like, oh, it's sticking out. You're more feeling that the muscle comes together right in that spot. Um, and so then the, the beautiful muscle fibers of the deltoid, this gets really exciting now um come all the way angling from the front of the shoulder all the way on the side of the shoulder and all the way to the back of the shoulder and being able to pull from the front the sides and the back what do you think that does uh well, they're at a uh, synergist and abduction awesome because they all come from there and what about do you think the difference between the ones that cross in the front and the ones that cross in the back awesome so here we have a beautiful example of a muscle that can be an antagonist to itself so these anterior fibers can flex and medially rotate and the posterior fibers can extend and laterally rotate so it can act as an antagonist to itself um yes it's feather like coming from multiple directions or and many of them yeah yeah um so let's uh you thought about those logically right and some of you jumped right to this thought process and maybe some of you did not. So let's break it down because I want us to think about every muscle and not just try to memorize every muscle. So all of our fibers cross over the top of this joint. And if we were to shorten, let's say the distance of this stretchy thing 
let's pretend this is five inches. I guess so. Sure. All right, so if it comes over the top of the shoulder, um, and let's pretend this is five inches long. If we were to short, what I would like you to try to imagine is if we were to shorten the distance between where my fingers are holding it to like two inches, then you can imagine that it would pull it up in this direction, right? And so then this is a good thought experiment when you take the muscle fibers in their various directions to try to imagine that same thing. So now if we pull from a different direction, right? Or you could like literally try to pull it, right? If you can't imagine it, you could take a free model and pull on it and see like, what does that do? Um, it may seem like sort of extra work, but trust me when you're learning over a hundred muscles, it's a lot better if you can actually puzzle through what would happen rather than trying to memorize them all. And in almost all cases, you can. There's just a few where the angle that it crosses is like so confusing that it's like, hmm, would it really do that? But in most cases, you can tell. All right, so um, that takes us to the actions, which we've already started to talk about, um, but I like to puzzle it through and then look at them. So our abduction, Let's go do this so we don't like, in case anybody's a little fuzzy on these, go ahead and AB duct the shoulder, glenohumeral joint. Awesome. And then we're going to flex the shoulder. Awesome. And we're going to immediately rotate the shoulder. Shoulder comes in. Beautiful. Awesome. Horizontally adduct. This feels like it should be a dance. <laughs> so that's all the anterior fibers. There you go. Front fibers. And then the back fibers, we can extend the shoulder laterally rotate the shoulder and horizontally abduct the shoulder. Awesome, awesome. And all of them can um, abduct. Awesome. Questions on deltoid thus far? Cool that, that that muscle can do so much. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty wild. Speaking of that muscle being able to do so much, um, yeah, I just want to call out that a lot of people have uh, trigger points, hypertonicities, adhesions, messed up uh, tightness in their um, uh, fascia. And it can be one of those muscles that can be a little neglected um, unless someone's got the pain right in it. So definitely I would say, you know, if somebody's got the trap issues, talk to their deltoid. If somebody's got rhomboid issues, talk to their deltoid. If somebody's got pec issues, talk to their deltoid. Um, you can always look at relationships between synergists and antagonists, always needing to work with those muscles. You can also always look at where um, fascia comes together as working with those muscles. So if we have this magical triangle where traps meet deltoid, then you gotta talk to both of them. Similarly, when they touch each other, they can get all tangled together. So the deltoid goes right up against what muscle? Pex. So that's another one where you want to talk to both of them. So whether it's your pin and stretches or whatever technique. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. What about when we stretch our hands above our muscles, uh, our head? Are we still using that muscle? Um, yeah, great question. Um, yeah, you're definitely using your uh, deltoids abduction. Yes, 100%. You're shortening it contracting it for that action. All right, cool.